Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Walking, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Today, the new event is coming up for uh, NA, so I'm going to talk about it. So let's get into it. So, Valentine's Day, coming up pretty soon. 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 <laughs> so that means we're getting ours soon. Way sooner than anyone expected, because this is coming on the first. So this is Say sh Shenanigan? Shenanigans. Say, and she's going to be in the event called Valentine's 2022. Not a so ordinary Valentine's Day. Here's the prologue. Valentine's Day is a cruel holiday. Those who receive no chocolates are labeled unattractive or unpopular, and so become the target of much ridicule. Funny enough, I've never seen this happen. I don't know if anyone's ever grown up. Maybe this happens in like... I don't know. I've never seen this happen though. It being unpopular, as someone, I don't think I got very many Valentine's Day chocolates. Maybe it's different in Japan. <laughs> Maybe in Japan they all throw <laughs> throw things at the kids who don't get any chocolate. Anyway, is being unpopular really such a crime? Is it not the popular ones who should be hated and treated as sinners? <laughs> this feels like it's written by an insult. Won't somebody just give me some chocolate? As a cruel punishment on Valentine's Day hangs over the heads of those who have no chocolate to their names, a sparkling girl with love in her heart and an unpopular bearded man scurry about in search of chocolate. Happy Valentine's. So yeah, it's going to be exactly like all the other Valentine's Day. It looks like the animation renewal for Marie is coming early, so we'll get that here. So, let's go here. The first thing that's uh, super obvious about this... Oop, there we go. That was a, you saw the TV release one real quick right there. But anyway, the most obvious thing you'll see here is that we're getting things insanely early. I think if I go over to the JP side of the game, we can take a quick look. I think this is, it was mentioned by some, but I'm just going to point it out here. Uh, let's go back two years, Popeye style. Okay, so this came in February 2012, and it lasted 14 days. This is coming February the 1st and lasting yeah, about 13, 12 days or so. 13 to 12 days, depending on when it, you consider the event start. So the maintenance will be happening on the 31st. And also, it's in the middle of the interlude campaign. When this previously went all the way done, it's it's a little bit... It's really going to be interesting to see how they're going to handle the later half of this game. Because like I said, if you don't know... Since NA is two years behind, we're going to enter this period where um, basically the JP side of the game got hit by the corona. And I think the most interesting theory about this that I've seen is someone saying maybe NA is on the original JP timeline, which would be maybe the most insane thing to think about <laughs> if JP is on the JP timeline that got screwed over by corona, but NA gets put onto the proper route of history and we actually get the way it was supposed to be like endured without but there was a lot of other problems besides corona there was a lot of like delays and stuff it didn't help for sure but it is interesting but anyway let's look into the event itself let me go to japan and look into the event itself <laughs> i should have realized this is what the, the issue of doing some things a little bit too early uh, this is a campaign rerun there we go. Hmm. So yeah, let's talk about the banner unit herself. Let's look at uh, Sai over here, because I really like Sai. And someone actually pointed out, which I did not realize until I looked at it, that the art for Sai is the same one who did the art for um, Bay from Hololive. And now that I've noticed that, I can't see the differences between them now. It looks so much the same. I knew that um, from that specific generation of Hololive that there are three people, there were two people who made from Fago, Paco, was it Paco? The ass-loving one from Fate Grand Order, I think the one who makes Nero and stuff like that, and then one other person that I cannot remember at the time right now in my head but there were two but if you look at the art it's very clearly it looks a lot like Fago characters uh and now here's the third one so that's pretty funny three out of five members <laughs> drawn by Fago uh, artists but anyway this is what our active skill does song of the poet b increases party attack for three turns charges party mp gauge by 10 percent for every for every turn for three turns recovers party's hp for every for every turn three turns Attack up is 20% at level 10, and 1,000 at level 10, and the MP gauge is 
and six turn cooldown. Second skill, grant self evasion for three attacks, increase on crit damage for three attacks, three turns, 30% at level 10. It's okay. Increase own quick performance for three turns, charges on AMP gauge, and gains 10 crit stars. 30% crit. It's 30% crit. 30% quick and 20% NP, six turn delay. And it's okay. Just saying uh, crit stars is nice. And finally, she has a no, quick and noble phantasm that is increased on damage against enemy servants with a neutral alignment for by 50% for one turn. Activates first. Increases on damage against enemies uh, the shadow servants by 50% for one turn. And then deals damage to all enemies and increases on damage against enemies with the man attribute. Its damage is 600% at level 1, 1000 if you get it to MP5, and charge is 1000 is 50% damage to man, and 100% if you get it all the way to overcharge 5. So yeah, this is Sai, um, or Sai, however you pronounce her name. Uh, I think she actually seems pretty damn solid. She has enough hits, which is important for quick. The only thing that she's kind of missing is some um, NP gain, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem, to be honest. A lot of the best quick farmers get uh, usually have NP gain, and the reason is is that it really helps a whole bunch with um, farming because quick kind of needs a lot of NP gain. It doesn't have the same luxury as arts, where it kind of has built-in NP uh, gain. So it kind of can depend. That's why so many quick servants' ability to loop is so um, weird, because it kind of depends a lot on how many hits you do, and also what your stuff like this, like MP charge rates and stuff like that. It's still a lot of stuff to think about. From what I understand though, from seeing other people use her, because I was never able to pull her on JP no matter how many times I tried, uh, she seems good. So I'm gonna go with she's good, and she has two quick cards, and two arts cards, and one buster, so pretty perfectly fine. Not 100% down to quick, but good enough. Uh, and she looks extremely cute. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to be trying for her. I think I'm only going to be doing two. If you did not see my um, Castoria video, I set aside at least two multis for Say, I believe. And if I was lucky enough to get less, get her in less, I would just immediately stop. Um, I don't really have a need for a archer who does quick stuff because to be honest I usually just use Dantes and that's it so the only reason I ever use a quick unit who is not Dantes is that I really like them and I actually like her so I think I would use a whole use her a whole bunch so I'm down for that so that's what I feel about say of course as always I say I say to say to say it all in general you should always pull for units that you care about if you're someone down for the meta then you already know if you're gonna be summoning for a unit or not but I'm here for, usually I think about how good is a unit, and if I really love them, I'm going to always summon for them it's in some capacity. And if they're a good unit that I really love, then I go crazy getting ready for it, so. Anyway, here's the other interesting part about Valentine's Day. I don't actually suggest you summon this, but you can do it. Oh, God. Um, on Valentine's Day, there's usually banners where they're kind of set side differently with a whole bunch of women. And these are usually women where you have a chance to kind of get them. The problem is, is that they share it 50-50, so if you do get an SSR and it's going to be featured, you have a 50-50 chance of it either being the one you want or the one you don't want, basically. So, not the greatest. I'll say this story because I think I say it all the time, Setonia right here. Lerp, um, during the year before Sai, the one for Shikabu, uh, he decided to go crazy trying to get Setonia because she very rarely got a single right up and so he decided to go for it here um what happened was is that he got an np5 of shikabu and zero copies of zatonia he lost the coin flip five times in a row and was unable to continue summoning so don't don't do it just wait wait okay <laughs> just wait is my uh advice to you on that one uh next let's see here are the ce's chaco heaven Fantastic looking art on this one. Queen's Dream and Midnight Tension, all great art. Nothing really stands out to me on what they do. This is actually going to increase quick performance, NP damage, and NP gain rate. It's not bad. doesn't have any starting um, NP gauge, but that art is pretty nice. Not going to lie. Now let's see, what else we got here? Here's the event. It's literally Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is always like this. They're always huge grinds. 
Oh, here's the event reward command codes. Lady in waiting of Westero. Engraved, engraved cards deal 20% against demonic enemies. The Jin's Lamp. When the engraved card attacks a target, it will inflict burn. In Hamishabat, when the engraved card attacks a target, it will remove one critical damage up buff from the attack target. Then the grave unit recovers 100 HP. It's alright. Hmm. So, yeah. Ah. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Valentine's Day events. It's going to be interesting. Again, I'm going to do a little bit of summons, see how it goes. The event itself is the same as every single year. It's just get your stuff in ready because, oh my god, there's so much. Valentine's Day is such a grind to get anything. <laughs> but it's usually pretty easy, and you get some tickets out of it and stuff like that, so not the worst. Plus, you get a lot of really cool scenes with your servants. And then later on, the mail one for the return gift, I think is later. Is it also here? Uh, it looks like it's here as well. Okay. So, look forward to all those new ones. I think it's actually random at the beginning, and then you can use the the other ones to... I forget what they're called. The Selecta Chaco. There is the Lock-On Chaco. Get you the one you want. The Surprise Chaco will help boost friend point drops. Really? Friend Chaco system is a new addition to this year where players will receive 10 when finishing a quest. Ooh! That actually gives me a little bit more incentive to make sure my friends list is nice. This max three friend Chaco per friend list users reset daily. Okay. So let me read that full. Friend Chaco system is a new addition to this year's Valentine's event where players will receive 10 mana prism when finishing a quest and the players whose servant was chosen as support will receive 200 friend points when they log in as opposed to the regular amount of FP gain for each time a player uses your support. This can be repeated up to three times at any subsequent times. The player chooses the same player support, will not reward the player 10 mana prisons when they clear a quest. However, the player can choose a different player support and get the 10 mana prisons as extra quest rewards, de uh, clear rewards, and just like previous ones up to the max of three times, this is max three friend Chaco per friend list uses to reset daily. No, you can only give friend Chaco if you have at least one in your inventory, otherwise the quest rewards will be the same. Please must choose to use it before the start of the quest in order to, for it to work. Valentine's Day Craft Essence increase this. Okay. Hmm. Alright. That seems to be the one new thing they added for Valentine's Day. So yeah, it should be a pretty chill event. I'm gonna try out for Sai. Hopefully I'm able to get her. Um, I can't. Once they pointed out that it looks a lot like Bay, I cannot unsee it. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I think I'll get my brother up and we'll um, do a summon video because it's been a very long time. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of it here, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. It helps out the channel a whole bunch and I appreciate it. I've also started to start trying to make videos be a little bit faster at the beginning and say all this stuff at the end just because I know some people just want to get the info out there. So if you make it this far, would really appreciate it if you helped me out <laughs> in some way. It's better than the old way of doing it anyway, but hey, goodbye everyone. Have a good day. Have a good night. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.